I am so pleased to be working with Austin Pedal Cars on this project. Their help and support along the way is going to be so helpful. If you have got a pedal car or you're restoring one yourself and you need any parts for it at all, click on the link in the description below, visit their website and you'll be amazed. They've put a, a huge amount of effort into reproducing anything you could ever need for these beautiful little pedal cars. Let's get into the video. We're starting a new project. This little J40, it's been hanging on the wall in the workshop for years. Having a little J40 race at Goodwood Revival is as prestigious as having a car race at Goodwood Revival. And you know what's gonna happen first. I'm gonna take this and get it sandblasted. I know it wasn't great and I know it was gonna be bad, but this sucks. Well, in no time at all, I have chopped this thing up into so many pieces. Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop, welcome to another video. Thank you for joining us once again. It's episode two of the Pedal Car Project. Now, thank you for all the positive comments and support from the first video. Uh, it's gone down a treat, which I'm really pleased about. And again, a massive thank you to Austin Pedal Cars for supporting us throughout this whole process. We made some good progress in the first episode, blasting the shell and realizing how rusty it was, getting over that hurdle, taking it all apart, cutting it all up and now we're going to actually start fixing the rust we're going to start with the inner rear arches i don't know why i just fancy picking them they looked fairly straightforward i thought we'll start with an easy one but later in the video it's going to get a bit more complicated because we're going to have to make some tooling to make some other panels it's going to be it's going to be interesting but i don't know yet exactly how that's going to go but stay tuned uh, let's get into some welding get these rear arches repaired and bolted back on to the little select mini select jig <laughs> Right, that's it, fully welded. It's quite distorted, but I think we'll hammer it back. Okay, well, that is the first piece repaired and fitted back to the jig. I did pick a, an easy victim to start with, to be honest, uh, that's done. I've now got to do the same again to the other side. The other one is in worse condition, but it's pretty much the same process of chopping pieces out, making uh, a paper template, transferring that to steel, cutting it out, trimming it, filing it, getting it to fit, like I'm doing here with the next one, repeat all of that process. And soon, hopefully in the next few hours, I'll have two rear arches complete and fixed onto the, to the jig. That just needs welding in place now. So I've welded that in now. Very distorted. That is just typically what happens when you're welding such thin sheet material. I'm trying to be as careful as possible with keeping the heat down and minimizing it, but it's inevitable that it's gonna distort and as it cools, it shrinks and pulls in and buckles up, which means I'm gonna get my ear defenders on uh, because the next couple of hours are gonna be sitting there hammering that and trying to get it back to nice and flat like it should be. So I'll use a hammer and a dolly, bit of grinding to take tops of the welds off. Hopefully we'll get it back into shape, somewhere near where it should be anyway. It's 
done. This was quite bad, this one, it's taken a long time. There may well be some final fettling with the actual shape and bits and bobs once it comes to reassembly, but they're done, ground down, sanded. I've sprayed some primer on them. Good old Worth's Metalite, working well. These two were the sort of easy bit. Um, I'm gonna try and make the front arch closing panel now. Um, well, first we need to make the tooling for it. But let me get this bolted on uh, and then I'll talk about the tooling. It's looking good. Right, what on earth is going on here? Why am I filming marbles? I feel like I'm losing my marbles. Okay, so I need to make these panels. The actual shape of the panel is fine. Fold two corners, tip that round, bead roller, hammer it round, shrink it, fine. The indents, I did debate using my bead roller um, to make those, but they cross over. And where the two beads cross causes a problem. And also the shape of them, the ends, uh, and where they intersect, you wouldn't get that effect with the bead roller. And I'm trying to make these as accurate as I can uh, to the originals. When these panels were made new in the 60s, they would have had a male and female die. One with the positive, one with the negative. Um, slight al uh, allowance for the material thickness between the two, uh, being a massive press and it would press them. Uh, and in one go, you would get this pressing uh, that would come out. And that's how they can get that so deep. That's a mass production way of making things. They were obviously stamping out hundreds of these. I only need to make a couple. But I'm gonna try and do it in the same sort of way, but just by hand. I've got a 10 mil sheet of steel, put it in the plasma cutter, cut out a rectangle and two extra strips. Welded the strips onto the back. Those two strips will give me somewhere to, for the jaws of the vise to clamp it. Then I've bought a sort of ball nose or rounded nosed end milling cutter. It's slightly larger than the pressing. That will give me like a little half pipe, a valley basically, and I can munch that across and then 90 degrees go back to the right size. Then I've got some ball bearings. These are steel and they're weldable. They are slightly smaller than the valley. I'm gonna weld that onto a stick of steel and make a kind of essentially a hammer with a rounded end that's just the right shape. Then I will bolt the sheet of steel, drill a couple of holes and bolt it to the plate and then use my hammering tool, which is essentially the ball bearing with a piece of steel welded on the end, to push the panel in to the valley that we've made on the mill. And that should give me an exact replica of what I need. Okay, I've got my piece of steel. Flat sheet at the moment. This is absolutely trial and error. With my ball bearing on a stick, I'm asking this sheet of steel to stretch quite far. It's gonna want to pull material in from the edges and that will essentially make it sort of dished because it's pulled in all the material. There's not enough material there to go in far enough. So I'm gonna use the wheeling machine to pre-stretch the area where we're about to hammer it into the form that we've just made. That's gonna stretch that middle area, I'm leaving the outside edge so that will stay the same like a frame and just putting, stretching the middle so there'll be way too much material in the middle. It will bulge up. Then I'm gonna bolt it to the form that we've just made so it can't move and can't go anywhere then i will have the material that i need sticking in the wrong direction but at least then all i'm doing with my bearing on a stick is pushing it into the hole Well, so far, so good. You know what? I know there's, a, there's obviously a texture there, but I'm, I can work on that. But it's going in the right direction and it looks really good to the original. I worry that where it's, that, that transition where it goes from flat to the curve, that's where I worry that it's gonna crack and split there. Um, but I'll just gently, gently, I'll be very careful and keep on hammering. Look at that. The back is really nice. The front is really nice. It, yes, it will need sanding down and some bodywork and bits and bobs, but that is literally, I've just unbolted it. And it looks like a pressed part. Look at the detail on the back. Then I need to get it to the right shape. You can see this has got a curved corner, a very important angle 
on that long side and uh, that is really important because the way this fits it's sort of the engine bay to the inner wing to the outer body so it's like tying in three panels together so those angles and those sizes and the lengths need to be exactly like the original it's very important so the next step is this we've got the original panel i've taken a rubbing from that with my dirty gloves works really well instead of trying to use a pencil scan that in draw around it on the computer use the plasma table thank you extreme plasma to cut out a template out of some was that three mil whatever i had and then i can use that to lay over the top to scribe and work out where the sides need to be isn't this brilliant i'm having so much fun doing this it is taking me all day just to make this one panel i'll be gutted if i mess it up now the more time i've got invested in this one piece of steel the more precious it becomes and every step going forwards i'm investing more time into it um, and if i cut one bit wrong or fold one bit wrong the whole thing's ruined um, so it's, a bit, it's getting more and more critical but look how flat that stayed well, you can't really see, can you? Ish. The next one, I'll put a little bit more shape in the pre-stretch. I'll stretch it a little bit more just to give myself a bit more room. But I think that'll be okay. This one will be fine. Once I cut and fold the edges round, that will pull itself round. Um, I think we'll be okay. I think it's going to be good. It's so close. Right, that just needs cutting out now. You can see all my lines on there. Right, now I've got all the straight lines and this curve cut out, all the outside of it. Look. There's these tricky little internal corners here and here where I need to cut a little square out. Very exciting because I've got the perfect machine for this. Ready? I don't know if you've ever met this before. Let me introduce you. This is my little corner notcher. It's made by FJ Edwards who made a lot of these big sort of metal shaping cast iron machinery. It's like a guillotine, but the blade is at 90 degrees, dead on 90 degrees. You've got the little bed in front of the blade with T-slot holes so you could clamp something down to it, even a right angled edge. And then you use the foot pedal, moves the blade down and just munches out an internal corner. It's, it's perfect for this application. With this machine, it leaves a nice clean square finish and you know it's dead on 90 degrees. See, there's a tool for everything, isn't there? Perfect. Look at that. I used a bead roller to break the edge and you can see it's starting to ripple up here. I need to shrink this bit now before I start distorting things. And then finish that off with a hammer. Very, very close to the original. I'm really pleased. Once that's fitted to the car, uh, it's, oh, well, I hope it fits to the car. I guess that, <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the key point here. Now that first one is done, that's taken a long time because I've had to make the extra template and the other tool and everything like that. The second one should be a lot quicker. Um, it's exactly the same, but a mirror image. So I can use the same tool, but flip it over uh, for the sort of stencil, essentially. The same hammer form, uh, again all should work just flip it over so now I've got to do it all again but mirrored for the other side Whew, right done anybody that does sort of metal shaping for a living would be embarrassed by spending an hour and a half making it but I don't care I'm chuffed I'm over the moon you can see a little bit more about what's going on in the back there but that's just as important because all of this will be that this side will be on the inner wing on the front so inside behind the front tire Behind the front wheel, you'll see this side. So it's important that that is neat as well. This edge spot welds to the floor, to the sort of side runners of the floor. That one spot welds to the inner sort of engine bay in a firewall sort of area. And that one runs around the outer body. Um, and most importantly, they're both identical. So that's it. The two front arch sort of inner closing panels complete. The two inner rear arches done. I can't bolt these to the actual fixture because they don't bolt to anything, but um, I will give them a quick spray primer and put them in the done pile. 
and uh, move on to the next piece. Where you're sitting in the car on the inside of the sort of cockpit area, there's two floor panels, one either side, the handbrake levers on one side. They would be big pieces to do because they join the front of the car to the back of the car. So I quite fancy doing those, but uh, let me know. Leave us a comment what you think so far. Anybody out there, I'm still looking for the outer body skin for each side. I'd love to find some original ones that I could sort of dissect, repair, and put back on this. So if anybody out there has got half a pedal car or a rotten one chopped up, let me know. If we can carry on this pace, we'll be welding this thing back together in no time. So thank you for your patience for me um, not working on the Porsche, but the panels are here. I've got them. So next time John's up, we might have a little bonus Porsche episode where we actually fit them up and just mock them up and get them eyeballed in place onto the car, but not quite yet. Gaining momentum with the pedal car and I really want to carry on with this. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.